In 2020, I was doing it, uh, not me, but there was a church that was putting on a tent revival um, in Saginaw, and that's when I met this brother. And um, I've been around a lot of people, right? I'm, I'm more of a teacher and a preacher, but out of the fivefold, when you talk about apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor, there's certain ones that carry like the anointing for that office. This man is a true evangelist, but he's called, he's like an urban missionary. If you see his table out there, he travels especially across Michigan, but in other states as well. I was just with him in Indiana this past weekend. That's where I was at. But he has a heart for the kingdom of God, to see the kingdom established on earth as it is in heaven. And sometimes at different places, it even, there's persecution that comes with that because he just radically believes in the manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. I mean, you'll hear about some of that this morning, but I just want you to know that, that, that this man, it's, he's the real deal. He got a table out there. He, he converted it. You tell him a little bit more about that, but he transverted a bus into a, like an RV where he travels and ministers all over the state. Um, it's, his, it's his ministry, Kingdom Fire Ministries, which he'll tell you more about. And, but see him before you leave today. Make sure you stop at the table. He might be in here praying, but Rachel will be in there. Make sure you bless this man because that's his job, full-time evangelist ministry. So what we believe in at Kingdom Life, we believe in blessing those who are preaching the gospel, right, especially when they come here. So let's show him some love with that. But more importantly, let's show him some love by hearing the word he has for us this morning. So, Father, I thank you for this man of God. It's an honor, God, to um, not only be his friend, but be his brother in Christ. And so, God, have your way through him this morning. Holy Spirit, open up our hearts and our ears to just be stirred up, if anything, to be stirred up by the message he has for us this morning. So bless him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ooh. All right. How y'all doing today? Praise God. So we need to pray for the sound guy real quick, because... I'm a little different flavor in the body of Christ. And so I'm going to have them play with the levels. You're probably going to have to turn me down. Um, you know, I get a little fired up back here. It's just kind of what I do. Uh, you know, every time I go to preach, I can start. Can you hear me? Is that okay? You want me to use that? All right, I'm going to have to use the microphone. That's all right. No problem. You're okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And the devil's a liar. See, he loses every time. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, I just, first of all, I want to thank the church family for allowing me to borrow your pastor last week. Uh, <laughs> or multiple pastors. Pastor Ray, excuse me, multiple. I borrowed Pastor Ray last week, and it was such a gift uh, to Indiana. Um, it was a whole different atmosphere. You know, it was hilarious hearing Ray go up there and preach. He said, man, this is a whole different world from where I'm from. Down there, there's horse and buggies. There's Amish. You know, it's a whole other world from Muskegon. Uh, I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. We both met in Saginaw, like he said, recently moved to Detroit. And so, you know, I'm from the inner cities, you know, and so that's really my lifestyle, but I'll go wherever God tells me to go. And so last weekend, we were in Indiana equipping the saints down there, helping do what y'all did yesterday. I don't know if y'all were out there yesterday, but man, that was fun. Praise God. I love getting out there in the streets and talking to people and praying for people and just, you know, being a blessing, a light in the community. That's what the kingdom's about. Right? He said, this little light of mine. Now, I believe we got a big light, praise God. we got a light within us that we're supposed to be shining in the midst of darkness, praise God. And so that's what we were doing yesterday. See a couple of faces from yesterday, too. want to welcome you all. Thanks for coming, praise God. Uh, it's amazing to be in the house of God today. And so, you know, I just want to share a little bit of my story, uh, a little bit of my ministry, then get into my story. Then I have a word for you all. You all ready for the word? All right, praise God. Um, so if you all know, like Ray had said, um, I have a ministry called Kingdom Fire Ministries. Um, you know, we travel around the state. This is what I do full time. I am a missionary. I'm an urban missionary, um, and I'm self-supported, meaning we do raise our own funds everywhere we go, whatever we do. Uh, we've been living by faith for a couple years now, doing full time out there in the streets. Uh, this year so far, we baptized 190 people on the street corners. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You know, and this is just, you know, it's just a, a small ministry. I call it a small ministry. Me and my family. If you got a picture of my family, could you throw that up there for me? Um, I do. I'm a family man. I don't know if they have one or not. That's okay. If not, it's okay. All right. 
Uh, so um, I have a family. I have a wife. Her name is Candace. She's at home with the kids right now. Um, you know, we've been married for 11 years. And I tell everybody everywhere I go, I got to give honor where it's due. Because everybody always sees Justin out front praising Jesus and preaching and baptizing and healing the sick and casting out demons and all the fun stuff we get to do in the kingdom, right? But I always tell people, like, without my wife behind the scenes, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. And so I always give honor where it's due. Um, I have a wife. Her name is Candace. Two daughters, Peyton and Paisley, the 13 and 9. They're at home today. And I have another little one on the way. Uh, he's, about, he's still cooking in the oven. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I have a son coming right now. My wife is six months pregnant. And so we just recently moved to Detroit, and we're just getting settled in, so that's why they're not here today. But they wanted me to tell you that it's a blessing. We want to thank you from our family to yours for allowing me to come and share my gift and over here in Muskegon. Um, I traveled all the way from the east side of the state all the way to the west side of the state, all because God said to come here and, and you know, be a blessing, whatever I can do to be a blessing to you all today. And so again, you know, our ministry, Kingdom Fire Ministries, um, I guess I'll share a little bit about the bus. Um, we got a bus in 2021. So I started to travel and do tent revivals, guys. I'm going to share my story in a minute, and this is going to be very important because I believe that God is not a respecter of persons. So what he did for me in my life, he can do for you in your life. Amen. So any, anything that he's done, all these testimonies and the things that I share with you is only a testimony of his goodness. It has nothing to do with me, everything to do with him, right? Revelation 12, 11 says, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved their own lives not unto the death. The Bible says that the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. So, and what testimony means in, in the Hebrew, it means to do it again with the same power and the same authority. And so when I speak the testimony, I'm prophesying over your life that what God did in my life, he can do that same thing for you in your life. Amen. Do we believe that? Hallelujah. Amen. And so, you know, I started to travel. I started to, you know, get out. I, I got saved, and I'm going to share my story in a minute. But I got saved, and I started to just go to the streets. I said, all right, God, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And I started to go and, and preach the gospel and seeing people get saved and healed and delivered and baptized and all the things. And, you know, lo and behold, through that journey of doing that, a pastor gave me a school bus. And he says, hey, Justin, God put it on my heart to give you a school bus. And it's a 40-foot school bus. And I'm, I, I live in the city of Saginaw. I got a tiny little three-bedroom house in Saginaw. And I'll never forget going to the service to get the school bus. And I go there, and, and he's like, yeah. And he, he had us stand up. And he says, here's Justin and Candace and their family. And he stood us up, and he prophesied over us that we would be traveling missionaries to the state of Michigan, and we were going to use this school bus to travel and preach the gospel. And that was 2021. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, I didn't even really know a whole lot about prophecy. But I'm like, I'll receive the bus. Praise God. I don't know what I'm going to do with this bus. I'll receive the bus. And so we got up, and I'll never forget driving on the way back home from, from Snover, Michigan, in the Thumb, back to Saginaw. My wife calls me. I'm driving this 40-foot school bus all the way back home. Halfway there, my wife calls me, and she goes, Justin, what in the world are we going to do with a 40-foot school bus? And I said, I don't know, but God gave it to us. Amen. Hallelujah. And she's like, where are we going to park it? This thing's bigger than our house. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I just got a bus. I'm just driving in a bus. So, <laughs> so long story short, we got the bus. We took it, we, we took it to a friend's house and parked it. Because what I always heard from God when I was learning about the Bible and things, I heard God's voice one day, and he said, if you don't hear me tell you what to do, do the last thing I told you to do. And so I didn't hear anything what to do about the bus, but I do know he told me to go preach the gospel and share my testimony. And so that's what I did. I kept traveling, preaching, sharing my testimony, and lo and behold, a young man got saved, gave his life to the Lord, got filled with the Holy Spirit. God started speaking to him, and he calls me in 2021, like six months after I got the bus, and he says, Justin, God started to speak to me. And I'm like, praise God, what did he say? And he said, little 19-year-old kid, you know, 19-year-old kid. And he says, God wants me to help you convert that bus into a motorhome so you can travel throughout the state and live in it while you're preaching the gospel. And I'm like, God told you that? He, he's like, yeah, God told me that. I said, okay. My wife and I prayed about it. We said, hey, let's do it. And he says, well, I don't know. It's going to cost you about $10,000 to convert the thing. Which, by the way, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, costs a lot more than $10,000 to convert a bus into a motorhome. But I said, okay, I didn't have the money at the time, but I said, you know what? The Bible says in Matthew 6, if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all things will be added to me. And so I got this bus. I said, let's start to do it. And we started to transport it and started to transform it. And we transformed it. And every step of the way, God would bring the money in. And so over the course of four years, the whole bus is completely transformed now. I mean, it's a tiny home on wheels. We have solar panels. We have a shower. We have bunk beds for the girls. We have a, you know, a bed for ourselves. We have a bathroom. All the things to live and survive in thrive we were so we've been living in that bus so the promise that God gave us way back then we were living in for three months just recently up until three days ago 
we just got a house in Detroit. And the reason why is because my wife's pregnant and we found out real quick that a bus is awesome, don't get me wrong, but for a family of four, that bus gets real tight, especially with my wife's belly getting bigger and bigger by the moment because the baby's getting bigger. So we just moved into Detroit, and, but we're still using the bus. And by this time next year, I believe that we're going to be out here in Muskegon. We're going to bring the bus. The bus is going to be used for outreach so that way we can reach people in the community. And it's going to be a billboard for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll bring it back out here. Park it right out here in the Kingdom Light parking lot. We'll be able to use that as an outreach hub to cook food, give away clothes, feed the homeless, do everything we need to do right out of that bus. Because it's God's bus. It's not my bus. Amen. And so, you know, we've been doing that. That's been fun. Um, we got a ministry. We started the ministry. We're going, guys. That's what we do for a living. So really appreciate y'all. Um, if you want to go back, we got t-shirts back there. If you can, you know, support our ministry, that would be amazing. But most importantly, guys, if you could just keep us in your prayers. Uh, there is a prayer card back there with our family on it. You could use that as a bookmark in your Bibles just to, you know, and then put it on your fridge or whatever. And just remember, anytime the Lord brings us to your remembrance, if you could pray for us, we really covet your prayers. Amen. Uh, we know the power of prayer, and we believe the power of intercessors, and we appreciate y'all. If you could pray for us, we would really appreciate that. Amen? All right, awesome. Hallelujah. Okay, so now i got to get into my actual testimony. Praise God. Thanks, for Ray, for that. I appreciate that. Thank you guys for allowing me to come and share my heart. And so I would just like to pray first, and then we'll go ahead and get into the Word. Y'all cool with that? All right, praise God. So let's go. Everybody bow our heads. Lord, we just thank you, Father God. Wow, what an opportunity, Lord. Father God, your word says that as we see the day approaching, we should be assembling more and more. And Lord, I know today is closer than yesterday, Lord. So we thank you that we're assembling here today. Not to hear from Justin. Holy Spirit, we say, have your way today. We want to hear from you, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you speak to every single soul, every single mind, exactly how you need to speak to them, Lord. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I prophesy that a, a chain of addiction will be broken today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that people will just be set totally and completely free, and the Spirit of God would rest upon each and every person today as they walk out of these doors, Lord. They would feel your your presence like they've never felt it before, Lord. We just thank you, Father God, for everything you're doing in this service. We say, have your way, Holy Spirit, and we thank you. We love you, Lord. What an opportunity, Lord, to be living in 2024. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. All right. Okay, let's get into, get into my, actually, the word. And But first, I really want to share my testimony. That's what the Lord told me. Um, again, when I gave my life to Christ, I asked him two things. And he said, Justin, go preach the gospel and share your testimony. So I already shared with you guys what the testimony means, uh, but I want to share with you guys my story because I believe that a lot of people struggle with things in life, and there's things that I struggle with for a long time. I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I'm saying that, man, I found Jesus, and he's completely changed my life. Amen? My testimony in the nutshell is I was really, really lost, and now I'm really, really found. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so my story starts out when I was at a young age. Uh, my mom and dad had me. Mom was 15. Dad was 16. Gave me up for adoption at a young age. I thank God for my grandmother. My grandmother took me in. Well, at the time I was two years old, she took me in. And, uh, you know, I just lost my grandmother about three weeks ago. And uh, so it's still kind of touchy to me. But I'm very thankful for the people that God puts in my life. She was a believer, so praise God I got a hope and a faith that I'm going to see her again one day. Praise God for grandmas and grandpas out there. Hallelujah. So my grandma raised me and made sure that Justin was in church every Wednesday, every Thursday, and every Sunday. She said, this young man is going to go to the house of God to learn about Jesus. And so I'm very thankful for that. You know, unfortunately for me, and like a lot of us, we go to church and we do the right things. And I thought I was being a good Christian going to church, doing the right things. But I never truly had a relationship with God. I knew about God. I knew about the Bible. I knew about Moses. I knew about the disciples. I knew about all the things, but I never truly had this relationship with God. And so it gave me a great foundation to learn about God. But unfortunately, only knowing about God and not really knowing God led me down a road of drug addiction. And so that is what happened to me. And so since I was born and raised without a mom and dad in my life, I was born and raised with this orphan spirit thinking that my mom and dad didn't want me, wondering, going to high school when I was about 14, 15 years old, seeing all of my friends talk about mom and dads and seeing them have families, but I didn't have a family growing up. And so the devil liked to play on my mind when I was a young age and tried to tell me that it was my fault, the reason why my mom and dad weren't together, and I was the one, and all of these issues and all of these thoughts started to come against me. Even though I was born and raised in church, now I knew to say no to drugs because they told me in church, don't say no to drugs, right? I knew that. But and in high school, I wanted to fit in. I wanted friends. I wanted to be part of the cool crowd. And so when they started to ask me just if I wanted to smoke a little bit of marijuana, at first I said no. 
But after about three different times and realizing that they didn't really, you know, they, were, they wanted me to, to be part of them, I finally gave in. I said, you know what, I'm going to try just a little bit of this marijuana. And so I smoked the marijuana. I'm like, man, this feels pretty good. After about two hours, I'm like, man, the, the pain, see, I didn't realize this, but at the time, I was holding the pain in my heart, and when I smoked the marijuana, it would mask the pain, and then that pain would go away for about two hours, and then afterwards, it would go away. Guess what? I'd need it again, and then I would need it again, and I would need it again. And after the course of about two years, by the time I was 14, 15 years old, you know, two years, marijuana wasn't cutting it anymore, and I wanted to say, well, I want to try some alcohol. So I went from marijuana to alcohol. I started, started smoking and drinking. Then I went from alcohol to cocaine. I started doing a little bit of cocaine. I'm like, wow, each one of these, you know, each one of these drugs made me feel a different way, and each one of them were masking a pain in my heart where Jesus should have been the whole time, but he was never really the king of my heart. And so after marijuana, cocaine, alcohol, I started prescription painkillers, went from painkillers to, to all different types of drugs and everything I could possibly get my hands on. And so, you know, I started with one Vicodin a day, went to two Vicodins a day, to three a day, to four a day, to five, to six, to seven, all the way up to 10 Vicodins every single day. Now this is no break in between. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Go to church on Sunday, praise God for Jesus. I would go to church and praise God, but then I would go back living like hell, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I gave God about two hours of my life every week, and that's all I gave him. The rest of the time, I was living for me. I was YOLO, I was doing me, I was doing the things, I was going to the streets. I live in Saginaw. So I was, you know, I don't get the drugs from the doctor. I was getting the drugs from the streets. I was buying them low and then going and selling them high. And I got stuck in this cycle of drug addiction and running the streets for about 14 years. I got stuck in this mess. And, and here's the thing about addiction, y'all. Addiction is this funny thing. You know, nobody, I promise you, and most of y'all probably know somebody, or maybe you have been in addiction. Nobody, when they're younger, wakes up, you know, they say, I want to be a drug addict when I grow up. Don't nobody say that. Nobody says they want to be addicted to drugs or alcohol when they grow up. Everybody, just like you and me and everybody, we have big dreams and aspirations when we're younger. Like God puts these dreams and these visions in our heart, but then once we get a little bit older, life starts to crumble on us and we start to go to other things instead of God, and that's how addiction starts. And so for about 10 years into my addiction, I brought it into my marriage. I ended up getting married. I just told you that. Brought all my problems into my marriage. And so, of course, you know, my wife married me thinking that I was going to be a, a man of God going to church and doing things, but I wasn't living up to the person that I should have been. And so my wife started to, you know, harp on me about these drugs and these alcohol and tell me that I have an addiction problem. No, I don't got a problem. I can quit whenever I want. How many people have heard that before? Yeah, that's what addicts would say. And I thought that too. I really thought that in my mind. I can quit whenever I want. You see, but here's the thing. I ended up having two daughters, and then so I'll never forget the moment when I realized when I was an addict. Because the addiction had started to take over and I started to just run my life. Everything revolved around my drugs. Everything revolved around my alcohol. Everything revolved around me making sure that I was getting high and getting high because, again, that pain needed to be taken care of. I'll never forget the moment when I'm looking at my daughter, my, my one-year-old daughter in the face, and this thought hit me, in my, and it hit me in my soul, man. Like, I, I don't know, I, I can't really explain it, but this thought came to me, and I'm looking at my daughter, and this thought came to me and said, I pray that you never find a man like me. And that, I don't know what that was, if that was God or what, I think that was God. But I'm telling you, that moment was the moment that I realized that I needed to get out of these drugs. And so that was the moment that I realized that I was an addict as well. Because that was the moment that I tried to quit taking the drugs and the drugs had taken over and now all of a sudden I can't quit. Because when I tried to quit, I had headaches, I had body aches, I had withdrawals, I had restless legs, I had all the things that an addict goes through. But that moment was the moment that I realized that I needed to start to change. You see, I had at least enough wisdom in me because the Bible says who the sun sets free is free indeed, right? That's what the Bible says? I knew that verse, but I sure wasn't living it. That wasn't a reality to me at that time, but I knew at that point that I needed some help to get out of this addiction. And so I did everything that I could on my own. I quit, went back, quit, went back, quit, went back, checked myself into rehab, did everything that I could do the natural way, and it never really stuck. I kept going back to the drugs. I kept going back to the Vicodins over and over. I couldn't quit these drugs. I couldn't quit the painkillers, man. I was Adderall, Vicodin, whatever, anything to speed me up, cocaine, any of that. And so, you know, I'm going to fast forward my story a little bit because I do want to get into the word. But, you know, I'm in Saginaw, Michigan, and I'm crying out to God in the middle of the night. And I know y'all have been here. I'm in my bed alone when no one else was there, just me and God. 
God, just me and my own thoughts, just me and my soul, I'm crying out to God, asking him to be delivered from this drug addiction, telling him, God, I want to be free from this. God, I don't know how to get free from this. I didn't know what to do. I'm, I'm talking to God like this, and I'm crying every night, trying to get out of this mess. And I'll never forget, you know, one week in Saginaw, I have my car break down, my other car breaks down, my dryer breaks down, my wife's getting ready to divorce me, my children are having health issues, all this stuff is going on in my life, and I'm at the Bell Tire parking lot in Saginaw, Michigan. In Saginaw, Michigan, I'm in the Bell Tire parking lot, no one else around, no one else watching, and this thought comes to me, you might as well just commit suicide and get it over with. And so, you know, instead of committing suicide, I get on my knees and I say, God, if you really are real God, and you're the God that you say you are, and you can save me from this mess that I'm in, God, I will live for you for the rest of my life, God. And that moment in that parking lot when I got up off of that, off my knees, something hit me and something broke off of my life. Praise God. That drug addiction was broken off my life. Been drug free for six years now. Hallelujah. Man. See, at that moment was the moment that I surrendered it all to Jesus. See, when I cried out to God, I wasn't just giving him lip service. I meant it with my whole being. I said, God, I will live for you. I will do what you want me to do. God, I'm done living this way, God. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm done with these drugs, God. Save me. Live me. And and man, I tell you, man, that moment, things really started to change in my life, man. Praise God. Now listen, I'm telling you, the hard drugs were broken. The addiction to Vicodin was broken. But see, this is when the battle started, y'all. This isn't the end. This is when everything started to try to come against me. But I said, God, I said, God, I want to know the truth to who you are, and I want to know the truth to your word, because I know that you're real now. You're not just a God somewhere up in the sky. You're a God that knows me. You're a God that sees me. You're a God that hears my heart cry, God. And I said, God, I want to know the truth. And he took me right away, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things pass away. All things become new. I said, hallelujah, I'm not a drug addict anymore. I'm a son of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I got up out of that parking lot. I said, God, I'm, man, my goodness, I want to know the truth. God, give me some more. So I had to get into the Bible. I had to get into the Word. You know, the Word says in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him first deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. It says, whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. In that parking lot, when I denied myself, when I gave it all to Jesus, I lost my old life, and God showed me a new life. Praise God. He showed me the way, the truth, and the life, and his name was Jesus, man. You know, the Bible says that there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. You see, I thought that the way that I was living was the right way. I thought that going to church was it. I thought, God, I'm going to church. I'm doing the things. I'm praising you. I'm doing it. But that wasn't. He wanted my heart. See, there was an outward type of worship that I was doing, but that didn't truly transform my life. It was when I surrendered it all to him and I started to renew my mind to the truth of what God says about me. That was when the transformation started to take place in my soul. See, I believed that I was saved. I believed. I I did believe in Jesus. I believed in Jesus in my heart. but I was never truly surrendered over to him. You see, the gospel is so much better than what we think, y'all. Man, I know you already know this here, but I was only taught the gospel of one day when I die, I get to go to heaven. And I thought I had to live through hell here on the earth until I got to heaven one day, and I'm just an old dirty sinner, and I just gotta be a sinner until I die. And one day, praise God, I'm gonna get out of this chains. But God showed me, man, the gospel is so much better than that, praise Jesus. He said, no, I didn't pay a price just for you to get into heaven. I paid a price for heaven to get back on the inside of you. I said, whoa, oh my goodness. You're saying I can live this thing out now? You're saying I can live in the kingdom now, God? And I started to ask him, and he started to show me. He started to transform me. He showed me how to be a man. He showed me how to love my wife. He showed me how to be a husband. He showed me how to be a dad. He showed me all these things, man. And I said, man, my goodness, this life is so much better than that little life I was living. You know, praise God. With Jesus in my life and putting him as the king of my heart, I made him the Lord of my life. That meant I needed to stop calling the shots in my life, and I'm going to allow him to start calling the shots in my life. Praise God. I had to, you know what, that's what repentance means. It's a change of mind. It's a change of direction. I was going this way. I said, God, I'm putting you as the king of my heart. I don't even know how to do that yet, God, but I'm going to position my heart in the right place to allow you to dictate and guide and lead my life. Holy Spirit, help me, lead me, guide me, help me to shape me and conform me into the image of your son. That's what the Bible says. Wow, praise God. Man, I got a little fired up. Y'all can hear me right? I'm a little passionate. Hallelujah. 
I'm a little different flavor, y'all. Y'all understand? But see, this thing, listen, I was a 14-year drug addict, man. Ain't nobody going to tell me that God ain't real. Can't nobody tell me that God, this God of the universe, can't take somebody from here and take him. Come on, somebody, and make something out of nothing. If God can use somebody like me, you better believe he can use somebody like you, praise God. Now I travel all over the state and share this testimony and help people to see the goodness of God that can set them free, praise Jesus. He is who he says he is, hallelujah. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords, hallelujah. Man, this stuff changed my life. People are like, Justin, you're crazy. I'm like, man, I'm not crazy. I just believe. I'm just a believer, praise God. I used to be addicted to drugs, and now I'm addicted to Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus is a lot cheaper than drugs. Can I get an amen, somebody? Can I get a witness? Come on. I used to be a drug dealer, now I'm a hope dealer, praise God. I get to go around. This is a much better life than that life I was living before. I got a lot of friends that aren't here anymore. I'm sure you do too. They got taken out by the spirit of addiction and these demons and these lies of the enemy, man. Praise God. I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with the devil. He ran me over like a Mack truck for 14 years. Now it's my turn, praise God. No, hallelujah. Come on, it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ who lives in me. Hallelujah. And the life that I now live in this body... I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Man, praise God. All right. <laughs> All right. So point number one, guys, to live the resurrection life, you must first die. Die to what? Die to sin. Die to ourselves. Die to the opinions of others. Whoo, that's a big one right there. Come on, y'all. People ask me for deliverance all the time. I'm like, if you could only get delivered from the opinions of others, that could set you free. Hallelujah. I don't care what people say about me no more. Go ahead. Call me a Jesus freak. Call me whatever you want. I don't care. I know who God says I am, and I'm not on drugs no more. Praise God. I'd rather take that label over a drug addict all day, every day. Right? I'll take it, man. Die to the old world. Die to the fear of demons and devils and prove the truth of this verse. 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Do you believe that about yourself? Praise God. You know what I love about the Bible? Every time I pick up this word, this is why I love the Bible so much. Because, see, the opinions of others in this world system and people are going to put labels on you. And you have to decide who you're going to come into agreement with. You see, God is never going to change his mind. See, this is the amazing thing. Every time I pick up this Bible, it says I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm going to wake up tomorrow. It's going to say I'm a new creation in Christ. A year from now, I'm a new creation in Christ. Ten years from now, I'm a new creation in Christ. Twenty years from now, I'm a new creation. This word doesn't change. You see, I need to change my mind to agree with this word. He's not going to change his mind to agree with me. I have to change my mind to agree with him. And once I did that, that was when I started to actually live this thing out and start to see Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, this stuff changed my life, y'all. You see, here's the difference between being saved and being born again, or we're entering into the kingdom. Let's put it this way. John chapter 3, verse 3, and this is what really got me, guys. Like, I really started to study these things. So I said, God, I want to know the truth. I really want to know what the truth is, and the Bible is truth. He says, we talked about this this morning. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So I said, God, I need to know what the Bible says and what it means. Holy Spirit, help me, because I don't really understand it. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, praise God. Listen to this. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus said to Nicodemus, I call him Nick at night. You remember Nicodemus? Came to Jesus at night. Nick at night, kind of, you know, he came into him. <laughs> so G Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night, and he says to him, How are you doing these things? We know you're a man of God. How are you doing these things? <laughs> And Jesus says something interesting. Now, John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered him and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, we know that we must be born again spiritually of the Spirit to even have a relationship with God, right? To have that one-on-one -on -one to understand. But this is interesting to me. So John 3, 3 says, you must be born again just to see the kingdom. And I don't got to go, you know, you already know about the kingdom here, praise God. But listen, one verse says born again to see the kingdom. And then chapter, John chapter 3, verse 5, two verses later, Jesus answers Nicodemus again. And this is interesting to me. This is what got me thinking. So John chapter 3, verse 5 says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So do you see there? The first one is seeing the kingdom. The second one is actually entering the kingdom. 
You see, I believe that there's a lot of us Christians in the world. I'm not talking about anybody in here in particular. But we are born again. We love God in our spirits. But we've never truly entered into the kingdom realm of God. You see, this is what we got to fight for, y'all. This is where the renewing of the mind comes in. Because you need to enter into this thing. It's not about one day when you die, you get to go to heaven. It's about entering into the kingdom realm here on the earth. See, people say, Justin, you're crazy. You really believe this, Jesus. No, I've entered into the kingdom, baby. I'm in the kingdom. Hallelujah. I'm here, but I'm not really here. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. People are like, you're crazy. I'm like, yeah, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. You see, when I got born again, my spirit went to go be in heaven, and Jesus' spirit, his Holy Spirit, came down to live within me here now. Where? Oh, on the earth. Who? Hallelujah. You see, this is what truly transformed my life. I started to actually believe this stuff. And I said, God, help me to enter into this new kingdom realm, this new living, this new lifestyle that you paid for me to live. It's not about just this natural world. You see, you got to understand there's two worlds going on at the same time. Ooh, hallelujah. There's this natural realm and there's a spiritual realm that's happening right now. If you could only see the amount of angels that were up in this room right now. Ooh, hallelujah. Praise God. Come on. Each and every person in this room has angels assigned to each and every one of us. They live within this spiritual realm. And that is where you also live when you're born again of the Spirit of God. And you're baptized with the Holy Spirit of God. God, open my eyes to see the bigger picture here. Help me to see these demons and these devils that are trying to attack me and attack my mind and attack my family and attack my community and trying to take out my kids. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you've given me the power and the authority in my mouth to break chains in the name of Jesus. No, I cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Leave my family. Leave my kids. Leave my finances. Leave my marriage in the name of Jesus, man. There is power, life of death in your tongue. Praise God. Whoo, hallelujah. But do you believe it? Hallelujah. You are a son or daughter of God. When I gave my life to Christ, I am a son of God. Hallelujah. You see, they call me an evangelist, and I am. Like, I love to go out and evangelize. Don't get me wrong. But if I got my title as an evangelist, come on, y'all. First and foremost, I'm a son. You are a son or a daughter. That is the highest title in the kingdom. I don't care, man. You can call pastor, evangelist, prophet. All of those things are for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Praise God. See, I ask people everywhere they go, I say, who are you? I say, well, who are you? Who are you? And they say, well, I'm a teacher, or I'm a pastor, or I'm a mechanic. Or I said, no, I didn't ask you what you do. I asked you who you are. You see, there's a difference. If we're getting our identity from what we do, then if you lose your job, then that your whole identity can be stripped from you. But I got great news for y'all today. You were a son or daughter of the Most High, and ain't nobody taking that identity from you. Oh, hallelujah. Can't nobody tell me. Nobody's going to tell me that. Praise God. I'm always going to be a son or daughter. And once I started to come into agreement and alignment with the truth of who he's created me to be, I actually started to walk this thing out. Now, this is where the mind renewal and the habits and all those bad things started to break off of my life because I started to agree with the truth of who God's created me to be. Now, that's for each and every person in this room. We want to live this supernatural kingdom lifestyle, praise God. That's what y'all are here about. I love this church. I love your mission statement. I love everything about this church, y'all. I've only been here for two days, and I feel like I'm family. I fit right in, praise God. Love you guys, man, seriously. Romans chapter 6, verse 4 says, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into his death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah, man. So when I gave my life to Christ, and I believe this, guys, this is what I do with myself in a, in a point of faith in baptism. See, God showed me this, and it changed my life. God started to show me, like, okay, um, so we were born naturally into this world. Before your mom gave birth, something happened to her in her stomach. What happened? Her water broke, right? I'm just, oh, sorry, I know there's a lot of things that happen. <laughs> I'm asking you all a question. Everybody's giving me this. Their water broke. So there was a water breaking. Before you were birthed onto this earth, your mother's water broke. And that was a signifying that new life is coming back on the scene. New life is about to arrive here on the earth, right? And so I want you to think about this now. God showed me this, and it was so powerful because in water baptism, now this is symbolic, but I want you to understand, I want you to catch this. In water baptism, 
There is a breaking that's happening on the earth. The water is breaking and signifying when you come out of that water, there is a new creation coming out upon the scene, praise God. A son or daughter of God. You are born again of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The same DNA. Like I got, a, I got my natural DNA from my natural dad, but when I was born again, the DNA, the same stuff that God has within him is now within me. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God himself lives on the inside of this body? What? I have no idea. My mind can't really comprehend how God, the God of the universe, fits himself on the inside of this body. But I can look in the mirror every day and say, man, God, I believe you're in there. I don't know how you do it, but I believe you're in there, God. Ooh, hallelujah. And so if I get my identity from him instead of my natural dad, now I'm not saying that, you know, I understand I have natural traits from my natural dad, but my spiritual DNA is so much deeper, hallelujah, than my natural DNA. You see, I don't let this face or this body define me anymore. Don't let this body fool you, because underneath of this bald white guy is the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Who do you believe that? So you got to believe that about yourself, praise God. I don't allow this to define who I am. I will allow this to define who I am, praise God. And that's how the addiction got broken off my life, and I've stayed drug-free for six years, because it is no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me, praise God. Who the truth, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, the truth is what set me free, praise God. Man, praise God. Oh, I love the Bible, man. So what happened when you were born again? Righteous identity. Okay. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Now, we just read this. I'm going to read it again. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. This is my fav one of my favorites. I got a bunch of them. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore, if anyone, and everybody say anyone. Anyone. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, this happens in your spirit. Now, you got to understand, you are a three-part being made in the image of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the same way that God is made in three parts, you are also made in three parts. You are a spirit. The Bible says in Genesis 1.26, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the earth. So you are made in the likeness and image of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's your spiritual DNA comes straight from him. But you also have a soul, a mind, a will, in your emotions, and you also live in this body. I call these bodies earth suits. We all have different earth suits. The only thing that keeps you here on the earth is your earth suit. Without your earth suit, you're not here anymore. So your earth suit is very important. Praise God. It's important to God, right? But you got to understand, your earth suit is only made, and even science can prove this. Whether you believe in the Bible or not, science proves that your body is made up of dirt, gases, and water. And some people got more gas than other gas. More people than other, right? But I'm just saying, science can prove that that's all you are. That's all your body is. But we know that we're more than a body. You see, this stuff started to like mess with my mind a little bit. Like, man, I'm more than just this body. There is more in here than just a body. You see, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in the body. So when you're born again of the spirit, God's spirit enters into your spirit, and you become one. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, those that are joined with the Lord are one spirit with the Lord. Hallelujah. Can't get them out of you. Whoo, he's in there. Praise God. You're one with him. You are in union with the God of the universe. Whoo, hallelujah. You are one with the one who knows all things. Whoo, that's powerful right there, baby. You are one. It's like Google on the internet, man. You go to Google, you type in anything, you get the answer. You got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, praise God. That's a big deal. But see, your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, that's what the devil's after. That's what needs to be transformed. That's what needs to be renewed. That's the part. That's why Jesus said, what is, it to, what is it for a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? Interesting. Why did Jesus say the soul? Because that's the part. That's the part that runs you, praise God. So if you can get that in alignment with the truth of what happened in your spirit, that's when the transformation starts to take place. Y'all checking with me? Okay, it says this, now all things are of God, praise God. This is 2 Corinthians 5, 18. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Praise God. 
That's all of our ministries, not just the evangelist, not just Pastor Ray, not just Pastor Nate. This is for every person. We're all called to the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I love this next part. Not imputing their trespasses to them. <laughs> While I was dead in my transgressions and my sin, Jesus came and died for me. Wow, that is powerful. And he didn't impute the trespasses to me. That's a powerful statement. So if you can get this, if you can grab this, when you're talking to other people out there in the world, if Jesus didn't impute the trespasses to us, we shouldn't be imputing their trespasses to them. See, this is an evangelism tool right here. Evangelism 101. If you can see people the way God sees them, it'll change everything about how you witness to them and talk to them. That's why I love this church, because y'all are after, it don't matter. God loves everybody. It doesn't matter what mess you put yourself in. God still has value within each and every person on the planet. Praise God. If you're breathing, there's a reason. Hallelujah. That's what I tell. That's how I say everywhere. I'm like, hey, there are people out there that just need to understand the greatness that God has already put with on the inside of them. It needs to be discovered. It needs to be spoken over. We need to prophesy over those things and make them come to life. Let them dry bones come to life. Praise God. Man, I love evangelism, y'all. <laughs> y'all already know. It goes on to say this. Now check this out. This is wild to me. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That's that born-again experience he's talking about, right? Now, but it says this, for he made him, so everybody say Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. I want you to meditate on that for a minute. How many people here are in Christ? How many people here are born again, filled with the Spirit of God? And, and okay, everybody in this room, praise God, hallelujah. If not, I'd like to talk to you after service. I got a great message for you. Amen. But I'm just saying, so when you gave your life to Christ, you got to understand that you became the righteousness of God. You are in right standing with God. Everything you do now, that relationship, that window is now open. I can go in and talk to my Father every single day. Hallelujah. Because I am, I embody the righteousness of God. I just believe this stuff, y'all. This is for each and every one of us. If you are a son or daughter of God, you carry the righteousness of God with on the inside of you, man. And so don't allow the devil to tell you that you're not. You see, you might make a mistake. See, here's the difference between living in sin and a, and a mistake of sin. You know, you can have a, I'm not saying that we never sin. I'm not saying that you never sin. But what I'm saying is that's no longer your lifestyle. You don't live a lifestyle of sin anymore. You, it might be an event in your life. You might trip up. But you are still the righteousness of God. That's why the Bible says that Jesus seated, he, he's, he's Jesus the righteous, seated, waiting for you to repent. You ask for forgiveness, and bam, you're cleansed from all unrighteousness, and you're, you get right back on the same track. You get right back on that same road, walking the right path. Praise God. Man, that's a big deal. You embody that within you. Man, love that stuff, man. See, this is, this is, I know I'm cramming a lot in here, but these are the truths, man, that changed my life. This is what helped me to go from drugs to not drugs. These truths right here, I, I just kept meditating on them over and over. I said, God, help me to renew my mind. Help me to understand these things. Because this is the truth of who you are. You see, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter what, what on the outside or what, what you look like on the outside. What matters is on the inside. It's the same spirit. Listen, the devil, if the devil would have known, he never would have crucified Jesus. Why? Because he knew. Like when Jesus was here, the Holy Spirit lived in one man. But when Jesus went back to be with the Father, he sent back his Holy Spirit. And now I'm looking at a room of about 150 little Jesuses up in here. Right? I'm just saying. That's, you got to allow that spirit to define who you are. Not this worldly system. Not your flesh. Not that. That stuff's got to be dead and gone. you got to crucify that. Man. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 and 24 says this. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts. That's the old you. You have to put that guy off. How do you do that? Oh, praise God for the Bible. It tells us how. The next verse says this. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is the key, y'all. Remember, your soul is what needs to be renewed. Your spirit is saved. You're wondering why you still deal with addiction. You're wondering why you still deal with the sins in your life. It's because your mind needs to be renewed to the truth of who God has created you to be. That's the big deal, y'all. Verse 24, and that you put on the new man. <laughs> Again, you were created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You see, the devil doesn't want you to find out who you really are. <laughs> 
Come on, somebody. The devil does not want you to find out who you really are because once you realize that, you stop taking stuff from the devil. You start taking stuff from the devil. Praise God. You start kicking him in his head. Hallelujah. See, that's what I started to do. I started to awaken to the truth that I am the righteousness of God. And the devil, I'm not scared of the devil anymore. He's scared of me. Praise God. Wherever I walk, I put my foot. The kingdom's right there. The Bible says in, in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Holy Spirit. He is within you everywhere you go. See, when you walk in, the whole kingdom walks in. When you go to Kmart, the whole kingdom walks in. When you go to Walmart, the whole kingdom walks in. When you go to the gas station, the whole kingdom's coming with you, praise God. But do you believe it? Hallelujah. Come on, man. Power of life and death in the tongue. You speak to these things. You speak to the mountain, and the mountain shall be thou removed. Hallelujah. Man, come on. See, Jesus took all the power from the devil and gave it back to his sons here on the earth. Woo, hallelujah. And the whole world is eagerly awaiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 19. That verse is still speaking to the church today. Hallelujah. It's still awaiting for the manifestations of the sons of God here on the earth. Your family waiting for the real you to show up. Your, your job waiting for the real you to show up. Your community waiting for the real you to show up. The righteous you, the spirit you. Praise God. See, this is what identity did to my life. Once I started to come into agreement with this truth, man, I started to walk in and just believe that God is going to start to work through me to change the atmosphere everywhere I go. See, this is how we're going to change the world, y'all. This is how Muskegon shall be saved. It's not just by one major guy evangelist. It's every person in this room doing their rightful thing. Hallelujah. Praise to God. <laughs> this stuff changed my life, y'all. All right, one more, a couple more verses and I'm done. Galatians 2.20, the Passion Translation. Check this verse out, y'all. This is in the Passion, if they got it. It says this. I'll wait for him to get up there. I know I'm fired up, man. I, I love Jesus, y'all. I love this thing, man. This thing totally changed my life. Listen to this. My old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. Meditate on that, y'all. My old identity is co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. Drug addict, crucified with Christ. Womanizer, crucified with Christ. Drug dealer, crucified with Christ. Gang member, crucified with Christ. Prostitute, crucified with Christ. That identity that you used to identify with, crucified with Christ and no longer lives. And the now this essence of this new life is no longer mine, for the anointed one lives his life through me. Hallelujah. We live in you union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loved me so much that he gave himself for me, dispensing his life into mine. That's what happened when you got born again, praise God. But you have to enter into this new reality. This is the new kingdom realm of God. See, Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He came and he brought a kingdom, praise God. Jesus never came to sit you in a pew. He came to sit you on a throne, praise God. Hallelujah, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, the Bible says. See, it has to become a reality to you, though. Whoo, hallelujah, man. <laughs> Look at Ray's like, man, this dude's crazy. Romans 8, 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, do you believe, you have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead living with on the inside of you, hallelujah. The Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory. There is so many scriptures in here, man. It's just, yeah, it's just waiting, bursting to come out of you, hallelujah. Rivers of living water will flow from your belly onto the people around you, hallelujah. The Bible says, in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Whoo, hallelujah. You know where that spirit lives now? He's not up in heaven anymore. The Holy Spirit is up in you. <laughs> so he's going to pour out of you into all flesh. He's going to pour out of you into all flesh. Praise God, hallelujah, man. This stuff, you just got to believe it, man. Praise God. I love this, man. I love the Bible. I love this. So, again, you belong to a new kingdom. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. And I'm about to be done, guys. I know I got a lot in here. Colossians 1, 13 and 14 says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Get this. You've already been delivered from the power of darkness. You have already been delivered from the power of darkness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, it goes on to say, and he has conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Now, is that one day when you die or is that right now? That is right now. Praise God for the kingdom life. Hallelujah. 
I can tell I'm in the right spot. Praise God. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of his sins. You see, we're already there. See, that's, that's, that's a big deal to me. See, I don't, I, I, most of us, we know what we're saved from, but now we got to understand what are we saved for. We're saved from death, hell, and the grave. Absolutely. You know, and a lot of people are out there saved from that part, but what are we saved for? Now that we're saved from that, what are we saved for now? You see, now we're up in the kingdom now. That's why Jesus said, I send you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. He said, occupy until I return. See, we're not on defense, church. We're on offense, praise God. We got the ball. We're running downfield. Time is running out on the clock. I'm telling you, we're in the last quarter, and time is running out, and he needs players on the field, not just in the stands. He wants people on the field actually driving the ball down the field, and we got a big team here, praise God. We're the armory of God, hallelujah. There are people out there that are sick and dying and lost and going to hell every single day, and he's waiting on the team to pick up the ball and throw a touchdown, hallelujah. Man. That's for each and every one of us. Prophetically, Ray had spoke to me yesterday that he's seen a vision that the lions are starting to arise in the state of Michigan. That is a prophetic act that the lion of the tribe of Judah is going to take his place back in the city of Muskegon, praise God, and we will destroy poverty, we will destroy racism, addiction, prostitution. That stuff goes when the king of kings shows up upon the scene. Hallelujah. And he's now, where is he? He's within you, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. We've got to show up as kings and priests here on the planet. Woo, praise God. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I am fired up, man. Praise God. Guys, the problem is not in your spirit, it's in your mind. Okay, Romans 12, 1 and 2, we already talked about this. Uh, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, that word in the Greek, that transformed word, it's like the word used like a caterpillar. You know, when a caterpillar, it's, it's metamorpho. That's the word in the Greek. So a caterpillar metamorphs into a butterfly. You know, God showed me this one time, and he showed me that every time in science, if you run a DNA test on a caterpillar, do you know that every single time it comes back as a butterfly? Isn't that interesting? Every time you do a DNA test on a caterpillar, it'll show you that it's a butterfly. Even if it's in a caterpillar form, even if it's in a in the cocoon form, it's still going to come back as a butterfly. I wonder how many people in this room are truly butterflies but only acting as caterpillars. I wonder. Because you are. You check your DNA. You're a son of God. You check your DNA. You got the DNA of the Father, praise God. The Bible says you become a partaker of the divine nature. How? Through his precious promises. It's understanding the promises and applying them to your life by the renewal of your mind that you start to understand that you're a butterfly. You flap your wings and you start to fly, praise God. You see, that is amazing to me. That's who you are. The Bible says in Colossians 2.10, you're complete in him. For in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are already complete in him, past tense, already done. It's the mind that needs to be transformed on how you live this thing out, guys. Praise God. You know, I'm almost done here. I gotta, you know, the other thing I want you to understand about identity, why it's so huge, okay? Last thing. You know, I was, see, people think I'm crazy. They're like, man, Justin, you're crazy. You gotta understand, I was born in poverty. I was born in Saginaw, Michigan. I was born out of wedlock. I was given up, left for dead. My whole family wrote me off, everything. I mean, I'm talking about, I went through it, man, I know. You would never be able to tell that looking at me now. You wouldn't even know what I went through. Interesting, unless I told you. People look at me now, they only see the butterfly. They don't see the caterpillar. They only see the butterfly version of me. But it's interesting because I started to understand that even though that my mom and my dad are the ones that physically brought me into this world, the Bible says that I was predestined to be here before the foundation of the world. Come on, somebody. Poverty doesn't define me anymore. The streets of Saginaw don't define me anymore. Drugs don't define me anymore. Even my mom and dad. I love my mom and dad, and I honor my mom and dad, and I'm very thankful for them. Even to this day, God had to really work on my heart because I was really angry and bitter towards them, but I've forgiven them. There's power in that forgiveness. There's power in that, truly, truly is. So I've already forgiven them and we've reconciled. We're reconciling our relationship. But you got to understand that God was the one who predestined me to be here on the earth. You are not a mistake. You are not 
a mistake. Let me repeat that one more time. Every person in this room, you are not a mistake. God has planted you here in 2024 with a reason, on purpose, for purpose, y'all. And there is greatness with inside each and every one of you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, that there is a treasure hidden in earthen vessels. We talk, our bodies are made of the earth. There's a treasure that God has put on the inside of you. There is greatness, there's gifts, there's talents, there's things that God has within you that he's just waiting for you to discover. He's already got them in there. How do you discover the gifts and the talent? See, not everybody has the talent of public speaking. Not everybody has the talent of teaching. Not everybody has the talent of pastoring. Some people might have the talent of being a school teacher or being a, a mechanic or starting a business or an entrepreneur or musical. There's so many different talents. That's why it's so amazing the body of Christ coming together as one and using the different talents instead of trying to fight each other. No, let's, let's glorify and magnify the gifts that he put in each and every one of us. Because the gifts that I have, you, you know, I use you don't have and the gifts you have I don't have I need those gifts in my life praise God because they're gifts from God so you got to understand that this power of identity understanding righteousness knowing who you are in Christ this is what truly transformed me to go out the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion people say Justin pray for boldness I pray for them to understand their identity understand who he's created you to be understand the greater one that's on the inside of you so you can walk out of these walls and actually put into practice and do some things with what the things that God has given you hallelujah all right y'all praise God all right whoo I don't know how to end it man I'm gonna kind of call Ray up I'm gonna let Ray do what he does I'm gonna be up here guys I want to pray for anybody that needs prayer today listen last thing and I'm gonna let Ray come up I know I say this like 10 times before I close every time you know, in the Old Testament, they had altars, and they would bring the sacrifices to the altar, and they would sacrifice it unto the Lord. You know, in the New Testament, we don't have to sacrifice animals. Praise God, somebody. Say, pray, thank Lord for living in the new covenant. Hallelujah. We don't got to kill bloods and goats and all that stuff and sprinkle all that blood. But you know what? It's interesting. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Paul says that our bodies are a living sacrifice. So in the old covenant, we sacrifice animals. In the new covenant, we sacrifice our flesh. That's what the altar call should be about. We're coming to the altars of God and surrendering ourselves over to Christ so he can live through our lives and we can become a living sacrifice. You see, the Bible says that you're a living epistle to be read by all men. There are people out here in the world that will never read a Bible, but they'll read your life. They'll say, something's different about that guy. Something's different about that girl. They're going through something, and there's something in there that I want. There's something attractive about that person that I want. There's joy in the midst of all of this chaos. They still have joy. They still have peace. They still are nothing shaking them. Man, what is that? I want that. Because the world is looking for that. And it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. But when you surrender yourself over to him, that allows him to big, live big through your life. And so as I open these altars up, we're going to have a prayer team, people up here to pray for healing. We believe in miracles, man. Healing, deliverance, whatever you need. We're going to pray for you. You want me to pray for an addiction to be broke off your life? Come forward. We'll pray for that. Praise God. Today is the day that you get set free from nicotine addiction. Today is the day that you get set free from marijuana addiction. Hallelujah. Today is the day that you get set free from pornography. Today is the day that it is God. It is to, now is the time of salvation. Praise God. And so I want to open these up for you guys to offer the prayer. Thank you all. I want to thank you for allowing me to come and share my heart here. I love this church. Love what y'all are doing. Love everything what y'all are about. Appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. All right. God bless y'all. Right. Stay up here. <clears throat> Second Peter 1 says this. Listen, verse 12. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. Though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent just as the Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Peter was saying, listen, you might know these present truths, but he said, it's my job to always stir you up to these truths. And that's what happened this morning. We're kingdom life. We believe in the righteousness of God. We believe in the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Justin just stirred you up. If you forgot about that, maybe you doubted it. Well, this scripture, he just did it. He stirred you up. And the Bible also says he confirms his word with signs and wonders. If we believe what he just spoke, 
that the kingdom of God is within us, that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, then that power is not of any man. It's of God in us two people, right? So if you do or are believing for anything in your family, in, in your body, um, in your finances, for your kids, whatever it is, we believe not because of Justin, not because of any of us, because the spirit of God is here, that he will confirm this word right now through them signs and wonders. And that has to be some great thing. It could be the little thing. It could be a healing in your body, or it could be the reconciliation, restoration of your sons or daughters coming to Christ. Whatever it is, don't leave out of here without prayer if you need it. We believe the Spirit of God is here ready to move and act. So there is going to be leaders up here. Justin will be praying. We'll be praying. Other leaders will be praying. Again, it's not of any man. It's of the Spirit of God. Also, his table's out there. My wife Rachel's there. Like you said, he's a traveling evangelist. Let's bless this man. You know, whatever you can. If you can't, you can't. We get that. He, he, like he said earlier, pray for him. Pray for his family. But if you can bless him in his ministry, the table's out there. Rachel will be there. He has some, some shirts that support his ministry. So let's be a blessing to him in that way as well, all right? God bless you. We'll see you next week. Come up and get some prayer and let us uh, bring the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is. In, in, you know, God bless you. <laughs>